I mean, just all the hard work finally coming to the surface. You know, obviously people don't see the hard work you put in. Um, you know, I've been, this has been a goal of mine since, you know, I kind of broke into the league. So to finally, you know, get to that point where, you know, now I get an award for all the hard work, uh, you know, definitely just, you know, builds more fire to, you know, go out and, and continue to win this award. Yeah, uh, you know, a lot of emotions, I think, you know, just the amount of work that went into all this, you know, obviously people always kind of doubting, you know, my defense and, and this. So it was just all that build up, you know, kind of all came out at once when I found out that, you know, I won the gold glove. I actually found out in October. So, you know, I was, I was pretty excited going to the playoffs, knowing that, you know, regardless, you know, I knew I was kind of going to be a gold glove winner. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. They tell you at the end of the season that you have to sit on it for six weeks? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I was sitting on it. I couldn't even tell my, my family. Like, I think the only guy I leaked it to was my dad. And I was like, you cannot tell anybody. Like, bro, like I might get in trouble. But, yeah, it was it was one of those things where it was fun, but it was also kind of just nerve-wracking at the same time. Did your wife know? Yeah, she knew. Yeah, I mean, she was on the phone with, with my agents when they called and told me. So it was cool. Does it, does it even give you maybe a little more confidence when you're playing? Oh, playoffs? for sure. Yeah, I mean, I kind of I played pretty free in the playoffs. I felt like, you know, I was just going to go out there and just compete. You know, I kind of have something already that I know I won, so this is just I want to win another. Next year, they should tell all, or all six that you guys won. <laughs> That'd be incredible. I mean, just to have six guys, you know, mentioned like that, just goes to show what kind of team we had. What is it? What was it like telling your dad? I mean, I know you just yeah. Yeah, it was. I mean, my dad has always been, you know, an offensive, you know, hitting. He has his own batting cage and whatnot. So, obviously, you know, he was hoping the silver slugger, you know, which I told him, I was like, you know, hopefully one day I'll get there. But, um, yeah, he was just, you know, my dad is not an emotional guy, but he kind of broke down crying too. So, it was, it was a cool experience to see, you know, just the hard work, not, in, you know, only in the batting cage, but, you know, also on the field payoff. In a lot of ways, this past season, offensively, defensively, was kind of the season that you've known for some time that you were capable of having. How do you go about following that up yeah just not trying to do too much understanding what my game is you know I have a real good you know feel of what you know makes me consistent on a daily basis so you know for me I know that I'm not the kind of guy that's going to go out there and hit home runs you know we have guys for that my, my job is to play the game that I know how to play on both sides of the field and get on base for those guys behind me yeah I think uh you know I just really had to kind of it's almost like a self-talk, you know, just be like, all right, you know, do I want to be a big leaguer? Do I want to stay in this league for a long time? What's going to make me the most successful? You know, swinging 100% trying to hit home runs is not going to be something that I'm going to be able to bank, you know. Obviously, I know I can put the bat to the ball. I know I can use my speed. I know I can bunt, you know. So just trying to outsmart these guys was, was something I started telling myself, you know, how can I, you know, use my bunting, you know, use my opposite field, you know, base hits. How can I use that to my advantage and just get on base and, you know, do what I can wreak some havoc and uh you know i felt a lot felt really good about that and honestly i felt pretty confident about that it was just a different you know kind of game yeah i mean that that played you know probably the biggest part in my my game last year and, and you know the season that i had was you know, having a guy that's had my back since 2012, you know, I mean, schultz has been somebody who's been a believer in me uh, since then. You know, he always felt, he'd always tell me, you know, you're a good player. You know, he'd always kind of be that guy. And having someone like that to actually, you know, be on your side for once, um, you know, it was huge. The last winter you had the knee cleaned up and hopefully not to deal mm -hmm. with some of the lower body stuff. Yeah. Last year at the end of the year, you had a little bit of a tweak. I mean, did you... Yeah. Is there work this winter you can do? I mean, do you focus on that more at all, or is that more from just one of those things? Kind of that yeah, I think, you know, it definitely came down to, you know, the exhaustion of just playing every day towards the end of the season. You know, I wasn't really working out as much as I should have, you know, doing things that I should have. So definitely some, you know, maturity things that I had to clean up coming into this year, knowing that, you know, I'm basically almost 30 years old now. You know, I'm not a young kid anymore. So, you know, cleaning that up and, and really staying on my nutrition and staying on, you know, my flexibility and, and working out. You know, even though if I'm tired, I still need to go on there and, and do the things I need to do. So, you know, just having that whole routine built in uh, is going to be clutch for me this year.
body wise? Are you? I mean, are you different right now? Like, are you, is your weight different? Is your composition different at all? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not trying to put on weight anymore. You know, for me, I know that being agile and explosive is my game. You know, being able to get to balls, being able to bunt, being able to you know slide in different angles. I know that you know that's me. Um, you know, hitting home runs and trying to—that's not me anymore. Obviously, I'm going to run into them like I did last year. You know, that's just part of the game. But you know, knowing who I am now as a person, as a player, is the biggest thing. We talked about your maturity as a defensive player. As an offensive player, you improve as well. Yeah. Base. Are you hoping to be able to contribute to the lineup even more, perhaps earlier, earlier in the lineup? Yeah. I mean, you know, I, like I said, I, I when I was younger, I wanted to be a leadoff guy. I wanted to do this, but now it's like I just want to win. You know, whatever it takes to win, and uh, you know, whatever show puts me, you know, I'm gonna do my best. Obviously, you put me in eighth. I I can do eighth. I know how to do eighth now. You know, I put me at second. You know, I did it for you know for second half of the season almost. So. Wherever they need me, I'm, I'm ready to go. Obviously, you know this team is, is super important to me, and winning the World Series is, is number one. We talked a lot about you and Dexter, one, two. And mm -hmm. When that got going last year, guess what? So did the Cardinals. Yeah. Uh, can you look forward to 2020? Describe your excitement of that possibly happening again. Yeah, super excited. Obviously, when you got Dex and me at the top of the lineup, and then you got someone like Gold, Goldie, and you know we had Ozuna last year. Um, you know, I was just trying to figure out ways to get Dex in a scoring position when he was on base. You know, and if he didn't get on base, how was I going to get on base and get him to a point where I could be in a situation where Goldie would drive me in or Ozuna would drive me in? And that's the biggest thing I, I started learning was, you know, regardless of my situation, I wasn't worried about what I was going to do. I was worried about how can I get, you know, Goldie into that spot to drive him in. Uh, obviously, you know, I would love to drive him in, but doing the little things to get my team on the board and win, it's all that matters. One of those little things that has been and can continue to be stolen bases for you, but mm -hmm. how do you balance kind of the, the knowledge that that could be a big part of your game versus you've got guys like Goldie in the lineup and you, you don't want to take unnecessary risk? Kind of how do you balance that? I think it's just understanding the situation. You know, obviously there's going to be times where I, I should be aggressive and then, you know, late in the game or something when we're down by one, knowing Goldie's on and I'm on base might not be the b best idea so it's just knowing situations and learning you know I'm, I'm always trying to figure out you know not trying to be do too much but just do enough where i'm putting pressure on this other team but i'm also giving my guys the best chance to succeed how much fun is it to steal bases though for you it's it's fun man honestly you know like it's an art to stealing bases it's you know you got to really play it off like you're not going you know understand reading guys like i'm real into reading body language and, and little tweaks that they're doing that I can really, you know, exploit. So it, it, was, it was a fun time last year. And I, I told Bader this year, I'm like, man, I'm going to need you to get going because we got to push each other. Let's get to 30. So, you know, if we can push each other like that, it's going to be a fun year. Colton, how much did you think about just how close you guys came to making the World Series over the offseason? How's that motivating you? Oh, dude, that motivated me through every workout, you know, every on the field. You know, just thinking about that whole situation, how that how that whole series went down. You know, obviously, I was telling people outside, like, you know, we we had their number the whole year. You know, we were, we won three out of four at Washington, won three out of four here, and you know, not many guys could do that against the pitching staff. So going into that series, we were pretty confident, knowing that you know we know how to play small ball against these guys and scratch away runs. Our pitchers are you know really good. So if we just do that, and you know, obviously these games aren't going to be blowouts, but they're going to be. 3-1, you know, 1-0. And, you know, that's what we were confident in. You know, obviously it just didn't work out. Real quick, what are you saying? You, you want 30 stolen bases and Bader himself will get 30 stolen bases? That, that's the goal. We're, we're pushing for it. You know, I told him. I was like, man, when you step in, like, well, let's go. Like, when I steal a base, I want you to steal a base. When you steal a base, I want to steal a base. Like, that's a friendly competition. They're just going to make us both better. So who gets there first? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm going to hold that right now because I got him last year. So, But, I mean, I want him to beat me, you know, because then that's going to make me push harder. So as long as he's pushing, I'm going to be pushing him even harder, and he's going to be pushing me harder. So that's that's that friendly competition that you want, you know, from teammates. It's not about, you know, ah, no, I don't want this guy to succeed. No, I want you to succeed, bro, because it's going to make me want to succeed even more. So if we have that, if we have that collectively as a group, I think, you know, World Series is definitely where we want to be. You've talked a lot about not finding your place. Yeah. Yeah. But it takes a while. Yeah. Does that give you a greater appreciation for a guy like Yachty and Adam who redefined themselves and have had a million chips on their shoulder and are still doing this? It's incredible. Absolutely. You know, I mean, I'm going into year number seven right now. I look at those guys in, you know, 14, and, you know, it's like, holy smokes. You know, like, you're con because what I learned in just my short time in the Bay Leagues, you got to constantly recreate yourself, you got to constantly figure out ways to adjust. Because these guys are constantly having books on you. They're figuring out your little tendencies, your your cold, you know, hot charts and stuff like that. So being able to constantly adapt to how they're doing. I mean, these guys have been doing it for so long. It's just, it's incredible to see that.